guys, it's Jane. Welcome back to Mystery Monday. Okay, today's Mystery Monday, I'm going to do the first half of my 10 favorite crime authors. Um, I have more than 10, but I've chosen 10 who I think cover a good sweep of the range of crime fiction and um, I was going to do all 10 today but once I started filming the video I realized that it was just going to go forever so I'm going to do five today and five next Monday how's about that before I get started I should do just a quick disclaimer and that is I am not an expert in this area I'm just an interested reader so it's possible I'll make mistakes and if I do please correct me in the comments below. Uh, if you correct me, I will learn something and I will love that. If I make a really bad mistake, I'll make sure that I do a correction in a later video. So thank you in advance for um, fact checking me. Okay, here we go. Five of my favorite crime authors. For each of these, I'm going to give you a book that's a good starting place. Um, for that author, if you'd like to get started and have a look, um, in most cases, that will be the first of a series, um, but not in every case. Number one, my favourite all-time crime author is Dorothy L. Sayers. Uh, Dorothy Sayers was a fair dinkum, legitimate blue stocking female academic at a time when they were few and far between. She translated Dante, she wrote plays, she did a whole bunch of things, but her most famous literary creation is Lord Peter Whimsey. Uh, there's a quite an extensive series, I think there's 16 books uh, in the Lord Peter Whimsey series. She was writing these mainly in the 20s and 30s, and all of the books are set at the time when she was writing them. They, can, they were written as contemporary novels. It's just now that that is in the past. So she was writing about the same time as Agatha Christie. Lord Peter Whimsey is a bon vivant um, second son, so he's a lord, but he's not in line for the dukedom um, because that's what his older brother is going to get so he's a man about town independently wealthy person who has chosen to investigate mysteries uh, the first one in the lord peter whimsey series is called whose body and i would probably not recommend that one because it's not dorothy sayer's best work um, everybody has better and worse ones and you know I would say whose body might not be the absolute best place to start. I would suggest that if you want to start with Dorothy Sayers, start with either Murder Must Advertise, which is actually the first of hers that I ever read. That's when she's in her full powers. It's in the second half of the run of the Peter Whimsey stories, but in itself the story is a standalone, so you don't really need any back story to enjoy that book. The other place that might be a good way to start with Dorothy Sayers is Strong Poison and that's because in Strong Poison Peter Whimsey meets Harriet Vane who becomes his ongoing romantic interest as the series progresses. In Strong Poison Harriet Vane has been accused of the murder of her lover and Peter Whimsey reads about it in the newspaper and decides that he's going to sort it out. Harriet Vane is an amazing character in her own right and um, the Peter Whimsey Harriet Vane relationship is one of my favorite kind of couples out of all literature. So if you don't mind a bit of a romantic subplot, Strong Poison, if you're just looking for a good old mystery, Murder Must Advertise. Moving on, number two. If we're going to imagine that Lord Peter Whimsey was picked up by Doctor Who and the TARDIS and translated into the present day, he probably would look something like... Thomas Linley, who is the central character in Elizabeth George's novels. Um, Elizabeth George is actually an American author, which I find amusing because all of her stories are set in London. Lord Thomas Linley, he doesn't usually use the title, but he is a lord. Thomas Linley is a detective inspector at Scotland Yard. 
Yeah, these are really superior police procedurals. Uh, Lindley has an offsider, Barbara Havers, who is a fabulous character as well. There's just a working relationship between those two, you'll be happy to know. They're really good books. The first one of those is called A Great Deliverance. Staying in the British Isles and police procedurals, we're going to move north to Scotland and for my number three who is Ian Rankin and Ian Rankin I think arguably has written the greatest police procedurals of all time and his main character is John Rebus, Inspector Rebus. There's millions of these and Rebus ages and becomes darker and bitterer as time progresses. So um, the first one is called Knots and Crosses. He's still writing these so that's a really good thing. There's still more Rebuses coming out. Rebus actually retired a few years ago, um, but then the retirement age for police in Scotland changed and Rebus rejoined the police, So, which, like, I was very happy about. <laughs> um, because there are so many in this series, it sometimes is a little bit overwhelming thinking I'm starting this series and there's 18 more books to go and I'm never going to get there. Another starting point for Ian Rankin, I would suggest, is The Complaints, which is a different character in the same world as John Rebus. The central character um, for The Complaints is Malcolm Fox, who is an inspector in the internal complaints division so therefore he investigates claims of corruption in the police force and the two worlds overlap because Inspector Rebus is actually a focus of Malcolm Fox's investigations. Hmm, fascinating. Uh, I actually really like the Malcolm Fox books too, and there's only a handful of those. So uh, if a really long series and starting at the back of a really long series is just a bit overwhelming for you, I would suggest having a try at the complaints. Okay, number four, we're finally getting to America. <laughs> number four, the granddaddy of all PI detective fiction, Raymond Chandler. His uh, great creation is Philip Marlowe, who's a Seamus, a private eye. Um, his first Philip Marlowe book is The Big Sleep, which um, was made into an amazing movie with Humphrey Bogart. Um, if you haven't seen the movie, please, please do yourself a favour. Go and look at the movie. There's even an amazing bookshop scene in um, in The Big Sleep. So that is that the movie's worth it just for that, hey? And she takes off her glasses and lets down her hair and, oh, she's beautiful. Now, uh, The Big Sleep is hard-boiled detective fiction uh, where everybody is pretty much corrupt. It's very stylish. His prose is beautiful. It's really a must-read. If you're interested in the history of this genre, Raymond Chandler is a must-read. And The Big Sleep is not long and it's beautifully, beautifully written. So that's a highly, highly recommended. Now, for today, I'm just going to do one more. And that is my favourite detective, um, as in private eye detective of all time. And that is a woman. Finally, finally we have a woman as our central character. <laughs> I'm talking about Sarah Paretsky's V.I. Warshawski. Sisters in Crime, baby. Uh, V.I. Wachowski is a private eye who works in Chicago. Um, she was a public defender before she moved into private investigating. The first one of these is called Indemnity Only. These are really masterful works. Uh, V.I. Wachowski herself is a beautifully well-rounded character and um, she has uh, a group of friends who you get to know and love throughout uh, the series. The V.I. Wachowski stories are soft-boiled stories, I would say, rather than hard-boiled ones. Um, she deals with lots of social issues. In fact, Almost always her mysteries um, encompass some sort of social issue. 
even though there's lots of bad things happening and, and we're dealing with kind of the lower social classes usually in the mysteries, which is kind of a hard-boiled sort of territory, she doesn't have quite the same pessimistic view of the world uh, that you will usually find in a hard-boiled story. Love is Sarah Paretsky and um, that is where I'm going to leave it for today. Next week I'm going to run through some amateur detectives of different stripes and also a couple of authors who specialize in standalones rather than series. So that is what I'm going to do in the second half of my 10 favorite mystery authors next week. Anyway, that was Mystery Monday and hope you're all well and I'll talk to you later. Bye.